civil engineering multiple choice questions in surveying. Part 2 This video is presented to you by engineer Mohammed Imran Aziz, a practicing professional civil engineer with over 20 years of professional experience in the field. CivTech Simplified is a faceless YouTube channel dedicated to empowering civil engineering students and professionals by simplifying complex technical concepts into accessible, research-based content. CivTech Simplified's mission. Our mission is to bridge the knowledge gap for those with limited resources, providing free, high-quality educational material to support professional growth, exam preparation, and field-level excellence in civil and construction engineering. In this MCQ's Masterclass series, we bring you basic definitions, core concepts, and 50 carefully selected multiple-choice questions, MCQs, in each episode to support your preparation for university exams, competitive engineering tests, technical job interviews. Today's focus is on surveying. Part 2. Answers are clearly highlighted to make your revision smooth and effective. Let's dive in and sharpen your civil engineering knowledge. Introduction If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button now so that you stay updated with new MCQs videos, prepare smartly for competitive exams, get expert guidance and technical insight. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon so you never miss our next video drop. Basic Concepts This video is a continuation of our previous episode titled Civil Engineering Multiple Choice Questions Surveying Part 1. If you're looking for basic concepts, important definitions, and foundational understanding, we recommend watching Part 1 first. Watch here. Let's begin the session. Now that you're familiar with the structure of this video, Let's move on to the 50 multiple choice questions related to surveying. Part 2. These questions are carefully curated to challenge your understanding and reinforce key concepts essential for academic success and competitive exams. Stay focused. Take notes if needed. 1. The accuracy in laying down the perpendicular offsets and in measuring them depends upon a. Scale of plotting B. Length of offset C. Importance of the object D. All of these Correct option D. All of these 2. When the length of offset is 20 meters, it is called Offset A. Short B. Long Correct option B. Long 3. The limiting length of the offset is con when its perpendicular direction is set out by an eye. A. 5 meters. B. 10 meters. C. 15 meters. D. 20 meters. Correct option C. 15 meters. 4. The instrument used for setting out an offset at a right angle is called A. Open cross staff. B. French cross staff. C. Adjustable cross staff. D. Optical square. Correct option. A. Open cross staff. 5. In a field book, the booking is commenced at the bottom of a page and worked upwards. A. True. B. False. Correct option. A. True. 6. The adjustable cross staff is used for setting out an offset. A. At an angle of 45 degrees. B at an angle of 60 degrees, C, at a right angle, D, at any angle. Correct option, D, at any angle. 7. For setting out an offset at an angle of 45 degrees, stata, cross staff is used. A, open, B, French, C, adjustable. Correct option, B, French. 8. A French cross staff has a magnetic compass at the top. A. Right. B. Wrong. Correct option. B. Wrong. 9. 
An open cross staff is commonly used for setting out. A. Short offsets. B. Long offsets. C. Oblique offsets. D. None of these. Correct option. B. Long offsets. 10. An optical square is used for the same purpose as the cross staff, but it is more accurate. A. Yes. B. No. Correct. Option. A. Yes. 11. The angle of intersection of the horizon glass and index glass in an optical square is A. 30 degrees B. 45 degrees C. 60 degrees D. 75 degrees Correct option. B. 45 degrees 12. The horizon glass in an optical square is A. Wholly silvered B. Wholly unsilvered. C. One fourth silvered and three fourth unsilvered. D. Half silvered and half unsilvered. Correct option. D. Half silvered and half unsilvered. 13. The index glass in an optical square is A. Wholly silvered. B. Wholly unsilvered. C. One fourth silvered and three fourth unsilvered. D half silvered and half unsilvered. Correct option, A, wholly silvered. 14. The optical square is used to measure angles by A, refraction, B, reflection, C, double refraction, D, double reflection. Correct option, B, reflection. 15. The instrument belonging to a class of reflecting instrument is a. Line Ranger B. Box Sextant C. Prismatic Compass D. All of these Correct option D. All of these 16. In an optical square, the angle between the first incident ray and the last reflected ray is A. 60 degrees B. 90 degrees or C. 120 degrees D. 150 degrees. Correct option, B, 90 degrees. 17. When the object lies on the left-hand side of the chain line, then while taking offset with an optical square, it is held in. A, left hand upside down. B, right hand upside down. C, left hand upright. D, right hand upright. Correct option, D, right hand upright. 18. The angle between the reflecting surfaces of a prism square is A. 30 degrees B. 45 degrees C. 60 degrees D. 75 degrees Correct option B. 45 degrees 19. The obstacle which obstructs vision but not chaining is A. A. River B. Pond C. Hill D. All of these. Correct option, C, Hill. 20. The obstacle which obstructs chaining but not vision is A. A, River, B, Hill, C, Rising Ground, D, All of these. Correct option, A, River. 21. The building is an example of obstacle in which chaining and vision are both obstructed. A, Correct, B, Incorrect. Correct option. A. Correct. 22. In a prismatic compass, the zero of the graduated ring is located at A. North end. B. South end. C. East end. D. West end. Correct option. B. South end. 23rd. The true or geographical meridians through the various stations. A. Are parallel. B. Converge to the poles. C. Converge from North Pole to South Pole. D. Converge from South Pole to North Pole. Correct option. B. Converge to the poles. 24. The direction of a true meridian at a station is invariable. A. Right. B. Wrong. Correct option. A. Right. 25. 
the line in which the plane passing through the given point and the north and south poles intersects the surface of the Earth is called a. Arbitrary meridian b. Magnetic meridian c. True meridian d. None of these Correct option c. True meridian 26. In a whole circle system, the bearing of a line is measured a. Always clockwise from the south point of the reference meridian towards the line right round the circle b. Clockwise or anti-clockwise from the east or west, whichever is nearer the line towards north or south. c. Clockwise or anti-clockwise from the north or south, whichever is nearer the line towards east or west. d. None of the above. Correct option. d. None of the above. 27. In a quadrantal system, the bearing of a line is measured. a always clockwise from the south point of the reference meridian towards the line right round the circle, b, clockwise or anti-clockwise from the east or west, whichever is nearer the line towards north or south, c, clockwise or anti-clockwise from the north or south, whichever is nearer the line towards east or west, d, none of the above. Correct option, c, clockwise or anti-clockwise from the north or south, whichever is nearer the line towards east or west. 28. The bearing observed with prismatic compass is a sum of a line. A. Whole circle bearing. B. Quadrantal bearing. Correct option. A. Whole circle bearing. 29. The bearing observed with a surveyor's compass is of a line. A. Whole circle bearing. B. Quadrantal bearing. Correct option. B. Quadrantal bearing. 30. The horizontal angle between the true meridian and a survey line is called A. Magnetic bearing. B. Azimuth. C. Dip. D. Magnetic declination. Correct option. B. Azimuth. 31. The horizontal angle between the true meridian and magnetic meridian is known as a. True bearing b. Dip c. Local attraction d. Magnetic declination Correct option d. Magnetic declination 32. Due to the magnetic influence of the Earth, the magnetic needle of the prismatic compass will be inclined downward towards the pole. This inclination of the needle with the horizontal is known as a. True bearing b. Dip c. Local attraction d. Magnetic declination Correct option b. Dip 33. At the equator, the amount of dip is a. 0 degrees b. 45 degrees c. 60 degrees d. 90 degrees Correct option, A, 0 degrees. 34. At the magnetic poles, the amount of dip is A, 0 degrees, B, 45 degrees, C, 60 degrees, D, 90 degrees. Correct option, D, 90 degrees. 35. The lines of Earth's magnetic field run from A, south to north, B, North to south, C. East to west, D. West to east. Correct option. B. North to south. 36. Which of the following statement is wrong? A. The magnetic meridian coincides with the true meridian at all the places. B. The magnetic meridian does not vary from place to place on the Earth's surface. C. The magnetic declination at a place is constant. D. All of the above. Correct option. D. All of the above. 37. The line of collimation must be parallel of the horizontal axis. A. Yes. B. No. Correct option. B. Number. 38. The axis of telescope level must be to the line of collimation. A. Parallel. B. Perpendicular. Correct option. A. Parallel. 
39th, in the surveying telescopes, crosshairs are fitted in. A. Center of the telescope. B. Optical center of the eyepiece. C. Front of the eyepiece. D. Front of the objective. Correct option. C. Front of the eyepiece. 40. In the surveying telescope, diaphragm is held. A. Inside the eyepiece. B. Inside the objective. C. Nearer to the eyepiece. D. Nearer to the objective. Correct option. C. Nearer to the eyepiece. 41. The image formed by the objective in the plane of crosshairs is A. Real and straight. B. Real and inverted. C. Virtual and straight. D. Virtual and inverted. Correct option. B. Real and inverted. 42nd. An imaginary line tangential to the longitudinal curve of the level at the center of the tube is called A. Horizontal axis. B. Vertical axis. C. C. Axis of the level tube. D. Line of collimation. Correct option. C. Axis of the level tube. 43rd. An axis about which the telescope can be rotated in a horizontal plane is called A. Horizontal axis, B. Vertical axis, C. Axis of the level tube, D. Line of collimation. Correct option, B. Vertical axis. 44. The real image of an object formed by the objective must lie at the center of telescope. A. Agree, B. Disagree. Correct option, B. Disagree. 45. When the image formed by the objective is not situated in the plane of crosshairs, A. The crosshairs should be adjusted. B. The eyepiece should be focused. C. The objective should be focused. D. The parallax should be removed. Correct option. C. The objective should be focused. 46. When the crosshairs are not clearly visible, A. The crosshairs should be adjusted. B. The eyepiece should be focused. C. The objective should be focused. D. The parallax should be removed. Correct option. B. The eyepiece should be focused. 47. The capacity of a telescope of producing a sharp image is called its A. Definition. B. Brightness. C. Sensitivity. D. Magnification. Correct option. A. Definition. 48. The brightness of the image. The magnifying power. A. Is directly proportional to. B. Is inversely proportional to. C. Varies directly as the square of D varies inversely as the square of. Correct option. D. Varies inversely as the square of. 49. The image produced by the telescope will be dull if it has tus magnification. A. Low. B. High. Correct option. B. High. 50. A low magnification of a telescope produces. Image. A. Dull. B. Bright. Correct option. B. Bright. If you found this helpful, Please like and share with your network. Drop your questions below. And subscribe to Civ Tech. Simplified for practical civil engineering made easy. Thank you.